Have you dreamed about opening a boutique since childhood? Maybe you have a store, but now you're ready to expand. Well, guess what? You're in exactly the place where you're meant to be. Welcome to the Boost Your Boutique Podcast, hosted by Emily Benson, retail boutique consultant, best-selling author, and a motivational speaker. In this podcast, you'll learn how to manage your boutique better, have balance in your life, and learn from experts who care. So whether you've been in the business for decades or you're just getting started, it's important to get help from someone who's been there and someone who's going to coach you along the way. So head over to BoostYourBoutique.com to learn more today. And now, here's Emily. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to the Boost Your Boutique podcast. My name is Emily Benson, your host, and I'm so glad that you're here joining me today. I want to take a minute here at the beginning of the episode to let you know and remind you that there are a few ways you can interact with me. If you are just listening for the first time or you skipped over the intro, I want you to know that I'm available at BoostYourBoutique.com. However, (laughs) I operate my consulting business under the name Stylish and Successful. So you can also find me at stylishandsuccessful.com and all accompanying uh, social media. So Stylish and Successful on Facebook and Instagram and on Twitter. I am stylish underscore success. So feel free to like, share, post, say hi on all of those places. And if you are a mobile boutique specific listener, so you either want to start or grow your mobile boutique I have lots of resources for you over at fashiontruck.com. That was my first business. That's how I got crazy in the entrepreneurship land of boutiques. So I've provided a safe space for you there to go and find everything you need to know about how to start a mobile boutique because, let's face it, there's not a lot of resources for you. So I'd like to be one of your resources. Okay, now into the episode, enough commercial space. How the heck are you going to be consistent in your boutique business? This is something that I always struggled with. This is something I see my clients struggle with. And so I thought I would just go right ahead and talk about it today. Because while, yes, I want to talk about how to run your business and how to make our money and yada, yada, I also really want to give you tools and tips that you can start to implement tomorrow and make a difference in your life, in your business, all of it. So this episode is kind of like a quick tip episode where I'm going to give you some really quick tips on how to be more consistent in your business. Because here's the deal, guys. If you're not consistent, it's going to hurt your business. I found that customers love consistency. They really like to know that you kind of have your act together. And so help them out by showing them that you do have your act together. The first tip I want to give you here is having a calendar. Ah, who has a calendar? Do you have a calendar? Maybe you're guilty of not having a calendar. Having a calendar is essential whether that means it's a digital calendar, so it's maybe Gmail or iCal or something on your phone or your computer that's going to give you alerts, or maybe you have a paper version, whatever's going to be easiest for you. Personally, I use Gmail, I use G Calendar, and I live by my calendar. If you're not on my calendar, then you don't exist. (laughs) I'm not going to call you. If you do end up getting on my calendar, you better pick up because I'm not calling you back. (laughs) That is the bottom line because my calendar is balanced with work and home stuff. So I make sure that I have a really nice balanced life and that I'm not working too hard. I'm totally guilty of being a workaholic. And so having a calendar helps me set boundaries with myself and it gives me boundaries with other people as well. I can say, Hey, I'm so sorry. I don't have time for that today. 
or hey, let me get you on my calendar so that I make time for you, depending on the situation, right? Perhaps you have a lot of people in your life who come in and out of your store or who are constantly emailing you, customers, vendors, etc. You know, having time to set aside for those people, that's separate from just like, oh, I'm sitting, um, I'm sitting here doing nothing, so I might as well like jump on my email and oh, I might as well jump on Facebook for a few minutes because why not? The bottom line really is, is that if you don't have a calendar, then you're going to end up distracted. You're going to end up not getting what you need to get done, done. You're going to feel really overwhelmed. That's how I always felt before I had a calendar. And I think with a calendar, it's adjustments. Recently, I actually just deleted my entire calendar of things that I had kind of put in there as time savers or space savers. And I redid it based on how I was feeling. I realized that there were times of the day that I had more energy and less, so I planned accordingly. Let's say I go to the gym. After the gym, I know I'm not going to want to do work, so I schedule in time to either food prep or uh, listen to some affirmations or do some money mindset work because I know that doesn't take a ton of effort for me. So your calendar has to be a balance of effort in terms of when you know you can do or not do things. And I highly suggest if you have kids, if you have a spouse, get them on your calendar so it's a shared situation. So you're constantly planning around everyone in your life so that you know you have time for everything. I think the biggest, hardest part of having a calendar is actually sticking to it. So that's sort of like one B. <laughs> You've got to stick to the calendar. It's all well and good to go into GCAL, break out time, add events, make everything color coordinated. So your time at the store is one color and your time working on marketing is another color and your time doing accounting is a third color. That's all well and good. However, if you don't actually stick to your calendar, it's going to be hard for you. So you've got to have the discipline to stick to that calendar. This is where I see a lot of people fall apart. This is where I've fallen apart in the past. I'm like, oh, well, that's on my calendar, but I don't really feel like that today. <laughs> or, oh, I totally forgot about that, even though it's on my calendar. When you stick to your calendar, you have more free time. You're not as busy because everything has its place in time. So moral of the story is have a calendar and stick to it, period. That is the first way you can start to be more consistent in your business and maybe have a little more free time in your life. Yeah, pretty great, right? My second tip for staying consistent is to make sure that you have that balance. Like I was talking about. You want to schedule in time for your business and time for your life. One of the biggest things I see women getting caught up in is this mystery of, quote unquote, I'm so busy. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. You know, it's something that, especially in the United States, we've really gotten sort of used to saying, and it's sort of this like badge of honor, like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm, I'm so busy equals like, I'm so important. And honestly, it's not. If you are so busy that you can't take time to have some self-care, if you are so busy you don't have time to see or talk to friends or have a date night with your husband or boyfriend, there is a serious problem in how you're balancing your life. And so I kind of want to call you out on this because the I'm so busy is stupid. It's just stupid. It's a stupid phrase. If you go through one of my courses, that's one of the first things you stop doing. That's one of the first things I tell you to stop doing. Because when we keep saying, I'm so busy, what it actually does is it makes us more busy. It makes us more stressed. And I am a total victim of this. I did this for years. I thought being busy was like a badge of honor and, oh, I, I can't deal with things because I'm so busy. The fact of the matter is, is that I wasn't interested in having balance in my life. I was really much more excited about clocking in the hours. I was more excited about 
spending time doing things I didn't like just to say, oh, I'm so busy. Because like I said, in the United States, we don't value downtime. We don't value self-care as we should. If you've ever been to an island or maybe a country in Central America or even to Europe, let me, let's be honest, most of the world values downtime more than we do in the United States. There is much more family time. There's paid days off. There's a much more of a focus on maintaining life-work balance. But in the U.S., we've got it kind of backwards, and it's not helping us. Maybe you're one of those people who started a business and gained weight. That's a really great way to notice that you don't have balance. Or maybe you love to have your nails done, but they're never done. Or maybe your hair has grown out and you haven't gotten a cut in six months. <laughs> they're all classic signs that you don't have balance in your life. You aren't taking time for self-care. And especially if you have families, then you need the time to have balance and put self-care into your calendar. If you can have your calendar and stick to it, and make sure there's balance put in there with self-care and walks or working out, whatever self-care means to you that will give you that balance of that work-life balance that some of us may have achieved and some of us may have not, that is going to be a huge piece of being consistent. Because let's face it, if you don't have balance in your life, you won't have balance in your work which means you are really headed on a course for disaster. If you look at the most successful people in business, they are the ones who take vacations. They're the ones who have assistance. They're the ones who take days off. <laughs> being busy does not equal being successful. So let's get that out of our head and realize that being more balanced in your work and life is so important and actually crucial to the success of your business. My third tip to help you be more consistent in your business is to use tools that help you do that, help you be more consistent. So what am I talking about? Tools, tools. Okay, what do you have in your toolkit that can help you be more consistent in your business? Let's talk about that first. Tools that I would use and that I suggest all my clients use are things like scheduling apps. So Buffer or Hootsuite that can schedule your social media posts for you. That's going to get you more consistent. You can spend an hour a week scheduling posts, gathering up stuff you want to post during the week and have it spit out every day, twice a day, three times a day. That's going to keep you really consistent. That's going to help your engagement in social media. In your business, do you have a set day to do accounting in your business? I like to refer to Mondays for many of my clients as Money Mondays. On Mondays, you deal with your money, you set aside your sales tax, you run your sales numbers for the week before, you look at your inventory numbers. Money Mondays have changed the course of so many of my clients' lives because as a creative business owner, the last thing you want to do is deal with the money. Let's be serious, right? We're in this for the fun, for the merchandise, for the shows, for the customers. Accounting is not sexy at all. <laughs> so making it a priority and having it be a set situation for you is going to help. So that's a tool in your toolkit. Your calendar is a tool in your toolkit. Now, let's say you don't want to do something yourself. You just have been avoiding it. Maybe you just genuinely aren't good at it. You just don't want to do it. <laughs> there are some things in my own business I just don't want to do. And so in that situation, that's when you need to find another person to help you. So whether it's an assistant to help you do paperwork, maybe you hire an accountant, or this could be something like having employees. Now, having assistants, having employees, this is something I hear a lot of women say to me. Well, it's hard to find good help. Okay, like, I guess I can buy into that. However, since I started deliberately intending exactly who I want to hire, I found the most amazing people to help me in my business. So what does that mean, deliberately intending? So that means that I sat down and I wrote out exactly the things I needed help with. That's it. 
And then I said, okay, now universe, go out and find me these people. <laughs> Literally, that's what I said. And within a week, two amazing people came into my life who are going to help me in my business and who are so incredible. So realize that if you keep saying good help is hard to find, then good help is going to be hard to find. However, if you say, I intend to find a person who can do X, Y, Z, who's friendly, who's fun, who totally gets me, you're going to find that person. Setting the intention to find people or find resources. You can do this for the app part of it too. Maybe there's something you need help with in terms of uh, systemically. If there's something systemically you need help with, then set the intention. Say, I really would love an app to come into my life or I really love a system to come into my life that's going to help X, Y, and Z be easier for me. It's really as simple as that. And then you just have to look for the signs. You have to pay attention to your feelings and your thoughts around that situation and know that those people will come into your life, those things will come into your life as long as you're ready and open to seeing them. Let's review the top three tips for being more consistent in your business because, as I said, consistency will make or break your business. Number one is having a calendar. Yes, so simple. Have a calendar and use it, okay? That's, that's the trick. <laughs> got to use the calendar. Number two is please make sure there's balance in your life. If you know any part of my story, you know that I've had some pretty tragic things happen in my business because of my lack of balance. And so I'm here to remind you, my clients, everyone in boutique land that balance is so important. And I can sit here and say it, but this is why I'm doing this episode because I also want to teach you how to have that balance. It's all well and good to tell you to do something. It's a whole nother level for me to teach you how to do it. So please schedule in balance. If you need to write down the top 10 things you love to do for self-care and schedule those in, get the help you need. And number three is expanding on the getting the help. So use apps for scheduling have helpers, have help, whether it's an accountant or a housekeeper, whether it's a nanny or a assistant, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you set the intention to attract someone into your life who's going to take the stress off of you, who's going to help you move your business forward in the ways that you so desire. I hope that you have gotten something out of this episode. You can always leave me feedback at boosterboutique.com. I'd love to hear from you. And if you love this episode, of course, please rate and review it. Here's to making lots of funds and making lots of money. Did you love this episode as much as I did? Head over to iTunes and rate and review the Boost Your Boutique podcast so more amazing and creative boutique owners like you can find out about it. And don't forget, head over to boostyourboutique.com to learn more.